So another strategic plan about to be implemented by Peter Ford and his selectors. Possibly they're aware that there's a bit of tiredness creeping in, particularly around the centre of the area. Yeah, but well, that was a terrific score for Sligo, and Nigel Fancy taking it by the scruff of the neck and driving on. And that's exactly what Sligo want. They want to run at this Kildare defence because they'll fall. Here's Darren McGarty, just introduced. Kicks it. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful football by Sligo. As Tony Davis said earlier, it's Croke Park's loss that Sligo have not been here. Remember, this is a side that has been promising over the last number of seasons. Got to the league semi-final. But this, their first game in Croke Park in 26 years, is a joy to watch, despite the fact that they're only playing with 14 men. Great point by Dara McCarthy. Waiting for the breaking ball was Willie McCreary. Dermot Early. Just barely holding on to the ball as Darren McGarty challenges. Ronan Quinn. Challenged by John McPartland. McPartland battling. Look at that for fighting skills. Sean Davey. Neutrals in Croke Park now responding. Goalkeeper Christy Byrne has to come off his line here being challenged by Terry McGowan and Brian Lacey comes forward pumping it long and over to the far side Eddie McCormick unable to control the first time Patrick Nocta, John McPartland the All Blacks going through a spasm of dominance Nocton is there for the return not rushed into uh, kicking the ball, they're holding possession, which is the right thing to do, considering that they have only 14 players. Eamon O'Hara, Dara McGarty, available. Beautiful skill by O'Hara. Flicks it outside to Michael Langan. And Langan, well, it was a straight kick, but unfortunately well wide of the target. Well, well, but some wonderful play by Saigo. Eamon O'Hara, some lovely silky touches around the play. A little shimmy and a sidestep and lays it off well. It's unfortunate they didn't get the score there, but overall they were right to hold up position. What they have to do is get a little more penetration inside the 40-yard line because Kildare have all those extra men behind the ball. Just confirmation as well that Sligo have made a substitution. Ronan Keane has come on for Porrick Doohan. Ronan Keane from, from Cliff Ross's point also plays in the half-back line. And Doohan certainly played his part here. And obviously at the moment uh, they decide to bring in some fit new players. This is a chance for Sligo. That is a great kick. That is fantastic football. Sixth point for Desi Sloyd. Sligo are level for the sixth time. Look at this. This is just beautiful to watch. Desi Sloyd kicked it way up into the sky and it came down over Christy Burns crossbar. Just news on that substitution. Ronan Keane is introduced for Porrick Doohan and that's a blood substitution. So I'm sure that you'll see Doohan back on very shortly as he's been playing very well. Another free for Sligo. And... Darren McCarthy calls out Desi Sloyne to take this. The referee is uh, telling the player that uh, he wants it in line with the linesman, Michael McGrath. That ball is sent well wide. That's only Sligo's fourth wide of the match. Now it's time for Kildare to try and take it by the scruff of the neck because Sligo really have the upper hand here. They're winning all the breaks, they're working hard for each other. Now it's time for Dermot Early, Martin Lynch and all those guys to stand up now and take the game by the scruff of the neck like they did against the McGall of Malone Newbridge. 14 minutes of actual playing time left. And this is going to be a free for Kildare. Oh, <laughs> 
So Tariq Doohan is fully recovered and he's going to be reintroduced. And Willie McCreary is also going off for Kildare and Carlo De Meyer has been uh, introduced as Kildare trying to strengthen their attack. A change in the formation as well. It involves John Doyle, who seems to be switching to the corner. Coming across is Nigel Clancy. Clancy has been very impressive since introduced. Adding strength and power into that Kildare, or rather into that Snigel full back line. Great running again. Uh, great pass inside and well won. Despite the fact that he was uh, unable to reach it almost, Sean Davy showed tremendous determination. And going across to take this free is Desi Sloyne. Going for his seventh point of the match. It's hit straight over the bar. A man who hasn't missed a free yet here in Brook Park. Desi Sloyne's seventh point is greeted enthusiastically by the thousands of Sligo people here in Brook Park. Sligo lead, 14 points to 13. And, and well-deserved, Marty, well-deserved the way they're playing there. Eamon O'Hara running straight at the defence, laying it off to Sean Davey. And Desi Sloyne there to finish it off. Terrific football. Kildare are going to make a change. It looks like Ronan Sweeney is going off, and the man that's coming in is the former Aerog and Carlo footballer, Garvin Ware. His only appearance up to now in the starting 15 was against Waterford in the National Football League. Sligo are playing like men in Sparta. They're enjoying this experience, but can they record a historic victory? Jerry McGowan. He needs support outside, it's not there readily. Michael Langan is there, but he can't. He's going out towards the sideline. Great defending by Kildare. Comes back out to Darren McGarty. Steps aside the elbow. Takes a shot, and Christy Byrne has to go out and gather it. Brian Laces, long delivery. Comes down towards Michael Langan. Sligo could be exposed here now. Cutting through the centre. Great running by Ty Fennett. Still Fennett. Sligo converts on top of him now. There are options, but he's not going to be able to distribute it because one man has the ball, David Durkin. An intelligent ball. And the crowd are responding here in Croke Park to a wonderful performance by Sligo. Giving it outside to Sean Davey. Eamon O'Hara in support again. Goes for the return. Davy once more tries for that return pass. O'Hara's brought down in front of the goalposts, and look at the crowd. They cannot believe this is a Sligo team that have disappeared off the Croke Park surface for 26 years. Dermot Early is annoyed with the referee and having a word with him, and the referee is now noting his name. The free for Sligo. In front of the post, Desi Sloyne, for the eighth time, raises the white flag in Krog Park. Two points between the teams. Just about nine minutes left in actual playing time. Fourteen men Sligo. 15 men killed there in a right old tussle in Croke Park. Martin Lynch, Nigel Clancy, staying goal side of him. Good shot, but it's tailing. Just kept in, and the ball has gone wide despite the fact that the ball went along the end line and everybody was having palpitations. It is a kick out for James Carr which I have no doubt, Marty, he'll take every little minute he, he can to do it. Uh, Sliger playing very, very intelligently. When Eamon O'Hara has the ball, he looks like Michael Flatley going up the field, dancing around the face, laying very good ball off, and Desi Sloan is just kicking points from everywhere. It's very controlled football. 
James Curran aims it over towards Kieran Quinn. One Sligo man making a dash with three Kildare players around him. And he manages to uh, force the ball towards Garvin Ware. Eddie McCormack laying it off for Dermot Early. Great running off the ball by Ronan Quinn. Back outside and again they lose the possession. Well taken up by Darren McGarty. Remember he's playing left out forward. Mark Cosgrove. Kildare under pressure. But it's beautiful to watch. Rather should I say Sligo under pressure. Eamon O'Hara laying it off for Porrick Doohan. Crossfield ball, not a good one. Intercepted by Brian Lacey. The play going from one end of the field to the other. Garvin Ware. This time Mark Cosgrove committed himself on Porrick Brennan. Brennan uses Lynch. Again, the Nigel Clancy just gets a touch. A great play by Nigel Clancy. No wonder they consider him a hero down in Sligo. Great running by Eamon O'Hara. He needs support now, but it's not there. It is now with Sean Davy. There's only one Sligo man inside the 13-meter line. Five Kildare players. Going forward, Ronan Quinn, Carlo Dwyer, Mark Cosgrove fairly and squarely gets the touch and then distributes a good ball over to the far side. John McPartland unable to reach it. Oh, he did so well. It looked like he was going over the line. McPartland, Davy is in support, calling for it. McPartland has to carry. Here's Sean Davy now on your screens. Coming through the centre is Porrick Doohan, normally a half back. Now, an incredible point scorer for Sligo in Crook Park. What a day for the men from the West. Mick O'Dwyer and his fellow selectors, Paddy Byrne and John Joe Walsh, know they're in trouble here. The men from Connacht in the all-black jersey have shown tremendous determination. This is your scoreline. Sligo 16, Kildare 13. And I reiterate again, Sligo have been playing with 14 men since the eighth and a half minute when Neil Carew was sent off. And as well as that, Marty, they're playing intelligent football. They're not wasting the ball. They're finding their man, picking their passes and winning all those important breaks at midfield. Darren McGarty wisely doesn't take the ball off the ground. Here's Eamon O'Hara. Well, you mentioned Michael Flatley earlier. Michael Flatley's father is from County Sligo, and I'm sure there'll be dancing jigs and reels here in Croke Park if Sligo can pull this one off. Eamon O'Hara controlling matters, taking the free as Jerry McGowan makes the space. Michael Langan coming from centre back. And that's his second attempt at goal. And the second wide for him personally. Less than five minutes in actual playing time. Three points between the teams. This is Kildare's third match in three weeks. And they're without Noel Buckley, Ken Doyle. And of course, centre-half back Martin Ryan. Depleted by injuries, but they still have numerical advantage. And Martin Lynch to aim at, at full forward. Nigel Clancy, this time fooled by Lynch, but again Clancy stayed with him. Sligo must not foul. They're defending admirably. Carlo Dwyer. Kildare forced to come back outside. Chance here, but knocked off his stride. Kildare tried to hold possession. Eddie McCormack, wonderful defending by Sligo. John Finn tries to find a gap. Here's Boric Brennan. Forced into the air and forced to sending it wide. It's a psychological blow, a psychological moment. But Peter Ford has these Sligo boys absolutely focused. Will they make another change? That was terrific defending there by Sligo. Everyone on two a man was putting themselves on the line, not falling, blocking down and making sure that nobody had an easy shot on goal. And that's so important at this stage of the game, not to concede a simple tap over free. And they're playing so well in the backs, midfield and in the forward line, they deserve to go. David Hughes is just being introduced for Kildare, and the man who's coming off is Eddie Mc is in fact John Finn. Free for Kildare. And for descent, an extra 10 metres. 
which is very silly from a Sligo viewpoint and gratefully accepted by Kildare. Again, it seems that Torek Doohan has to go off for some medical attention. And the referee has just taken the moment to send Doohan off the field while this free is going to be taken. Once again, this is a blood rule replacement for Torek Doohan. It was only a few years ago, Marty, we were talking about Connacht football being down. Are we going to have four Connacht teams going in for the draw now for the next one? Uh, what a way they've come in the last four years. Looks like Ronan Keane has come on just uh, temporarily for Porig Doohan. As Kildare trying to reduce Sligo's lead to two points. The white flag has been raised thanks to the accurate free-taking of John Doyle. Two points between the teams. 68 minutes played, two minutes left. Can Mickle pull something out of it, the hat now for the Lily Whites? That is Kildare's first score in 17 minutes. A remarkable statistic. Carl O'Neill is going to be introduced now for Sligo and he normally plays as a half forward he's from Kulera Strand Hill and Jerry McGowan is the player that's going off and Jerry picked up an ankle injury earlier but what a game this player has uh, contributed in his performance remarkable at times with two great points and it also takes the momentum out of the score that Kildare got I think that could be a tactical thing by Peter Ford as well just to slow the game down Sligo have now completed their uh, substitutions in terms of five and all they have got to do now is hold possession Eamon O'Hara just took his eye off it and it gives the initiative to Kildare Great defending again. The foul on Ronan Keane, just introduced, gives Sligo the initiative and the chance to slow matters down. 20 seconds left in Croke Park. There will be time added on. But in actual playing time, there's 20 seconds. Now, Porik Doohan is being reintroduced. Eamon O'Hara will know that possession now is crucial. And he's just the man to carry it to Kildare. O'Hara pumping it in low, in towards Desi Sloy. Sligo looking perhaps for the free. They have possession, however. Eamon O'Hara again in control. Back to Michael Langan. This is very good experience play by Sligo. Not wasting possession. However, Kildare have the ball now. David Hughes involved as they try and open up this Sligo defence. Carlo Dwyer laying it off to Martin Lynch. Nigel Clancy has done such a great job since introduced. This is a testing time. Eddie McCormick goes for the point and it's swinging over the bar. Eddie McCormick with his second point and that was such a difficult angle. Almost a minute played of injury time. And that's the scoreline. Sligo 16, Kildare 15. He must also hands it to Kildare. They will not give up right to the very end. They'll fight to the very end. But they must say that Sligo deserve their lead. They've played tremendous football all through. The linesman hasn't informed uh, the public or indeed us how much time is left. He's doing it now. There's three minutes. Three minutes for Sligo to hold on. Mark Cosgrove with a great interception. Back to Nigel Clancy. Sligo have to get it out of their half of the field and hold possession. Sligo player and the Kildare player were in a collision a moment ago. They're down on the field as Michael Langan takes off. They have to hold the ball. 
David Hughes challenging for Michael Langan while he was doing the right thing, overdid it, overcarried, and it's a free to Kildare. Meanwhile, the referee will now again halt play because Martin Lynch was involved in this collision. Sligo Nigel Clancy is trying to tell the umpires, did you see what happened? As Peter Ford can hardly watch his final few moments. Mark Cosgrove is the uh, Sligo fullback that's also down injured. And uh, this is the incident again. And Lynch and Cosgrove, as you can see, collided off the ball. This will mean more at a time, of course, not just the three minutes. The referee here will add on three minutes, and because of this delay, it'll be at his own discretion from here on. That's exactly what Seamus McCormick of Mead, the match referee in, in uh, the Connacht final last Sunday in Roscommon, did. And he was perfectly entitled to do so. Anthony Rainbow with the free. It's very, very tense in Croke Park. Comes away, comes down to Eddie McCormack, going for the equaliser, chasing after it is Carlo Dewar. It's not gone yet. Punched away by Kieran Quinn and out over the sideline. Nine ball, Kildare. Sligo people can hardly watch. Carlo Dewar. What are his options? Martin Lynch makes the run as anticipated. O'Dwyer looks for the return. Difficult angle. Floats it in. It's very high. But it's gone to the left and wide. Art Kildare out of the championship. Art Sligo in the draw for the next round of the All-Ireland series. 74 minutes played. But there's still more time as a result of those injuries. James Curran. His first game ever in Croke Park. Only his second championship match. This kick out and possession is crucial. And Kildare have it. Anthony Rainbow bursting forward. It's on the ground. Sligo not falling. And the free is given to Sligo. And Kildare are absolutely annoyed and frustrated beyond belief. They now have to hold possession. Cramp setting in on what now appears a historic day for Sligo. Nigel Clancy says, cramp or no cramp, away you go, McGarty. Eamon O'Hara surprisingly will give it long. The short ball might have been a better option. But Sligo again have possession. Kildare are rattled. Time ticking away. Look at these people's expressions. They can hardly watch. Our Sligo about to record an amazing victory. Ball pumped into space. Desi Sloan chases after it. The referee blows his whistle. Kildare are out of the championship. Sligo have conquered the Lily Whites. Niall Carew back on the pitch having been sent off. But this is a day when strategically Sligo got it right and people like Peter Ford, Manny Hoy, TJ Kilgallen and company can take a bow because this was truly amazing. Playing this championship match in Croke Park for the first time in 26 years, they had to record a victory over Kildare with just 14 men. Absolutely amazing. A terrific football by Sligo. Huge heart all the way through, but along with their heart, they played with their head. They played intelligent football, laying the ball off, and it, it finished it off very well. Every time Kildare fouled, Desi Sloan just kicked it straight over the bar. Eamon O'Hara, there's so many heroes for them today, really deserve their victory, and what a game they've played. And the bonfires will blaze undoubtedly in Sligo. This is worth the Connacht Championship, or indeed an All-Ireland to Sligo, but they do go through to the quarter-finals of the All-Ireland series. Full-time, Sligo, 16 points, Kildare, 15. Let's go down to uh, the sideline and Darren Maloney for some immediate reaction. Peter, that was absolutely sensational. Well, it's hard to believe uh, 
I mean, it didn't look great. We, we got the man sent off so soon, and we lost some key players with injuries, but uh, well, the lads were fabulous. And I uh, just like looking up there and all the Sligo flags, I mean, we never thought we'd see it this year, and uh, it's fabulous. The character you showed, you went three points down, you looked to be struggling, the extra man started to show them, but the character to drag yourselves back into it. Oh, they're amazing, I mean, I, mean, I don't know what to say, I mean, the fellas were fabulous, you know, they worked so hard, and, you know, we've I mean, got fabulous scores in the second half, and the tackling, and the blocking, and, uh, oh, it's, it's, I can't believe it, I can't believe it. First time in 26 years Sligo have been here in Crow Park, they'll remember this for another 26. Oh, they will, yeah, I mean, that's the first time ever to win, you know, all those players, the first time here, with a 100% record, you know, they never lost, and, uh, We'll be here again soon and, you know, hopefully, you never know, it's great. And for you, Peter, what does it mean after the disappointment the last day? Oh, it's great. I mean, we were, we were unfortunate to lose to Mayo. I mean, we, we had the game for the take in the first half. And, uh, but I was telling the lads, we knew we were good enough, you know. I mean, it, we knew it, like, we played as well as we did in the first half against Mayo and kind of kept the goal for the extra 35 minutes. We can give a game to any team and probably beat a lot of teams. And uh, the lads believed that themselves, you know. And uh, like, deep down, we knew we had a good chance. And... Uh, didn't look likely for a long time, but uh, it's great to win it the way we did. Peter, thanks for talking okay, to us. Enjoy your moment. Thank you very much. And Sligo won it in style. Scenes of joy around Croke Park. A day to remember for Sligo. We'll get our experts' uh, analysis and thoughts, but first, we take this commercial break. That's the second game there. Look at the statistics then from Sligo. Yeah, incredible stuff, as I said. I thought Eamon O'Hara was absolutely brilliant today for Sligo, as indeed were all of the Sligo players. But Eamon O'Hara is actually talking to us now. Park here, you see Sligo people crying, they're standing around cheering, they probably won't leave here for hours. What what must it feel like? It's unreal. It's a dream come true. Um, you know, I, I haven't got the words to describe it at the moment because I never have experienced it before and none of the lads have and I just look around now, the lads are in a lap of honour. I think Marty Morrissey said a couple of years ago in Clare when the, the All Ireland or whatever it was, there'd be no cattle meat in Sligo. It could be quite the same in Sligo, or in Clare, but it could be quite the same in Sligo. It's unreal. I'm just looking on your jersey, you have Land of Heart's Desire. You showed some heart to recover from the sending off and then to come back from three points down in the second half. Yeah, it was, uh, it was harsh. I didn't see the incident, but it burned the nile at half time. It was very, very little Nile Carew. Um, it happened. It's something that Peter Ford often said, that the 14 man will always respond to the 15 and work harder. That's what we done today. We dug deep. Um, everybody gave that little bit extra without Paul Taylor starting. Like before the game, everybody said that they give that little bit extra. I mean, Neil Carew getting sent off. We give another little bit more. And thankfully, at the end of the day, we've we achieved what we set out to do. What does it mean for the county? Unbelievable. Uh, it's 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 hard to say. I'm just I'm delighted for the people that travelled. You know, parents of all the lads and everything else. You know, it's a great day for them. And uh, hopefully. As you say, long way continue and hopefully we'll get our next couple of games in Crow Park. Well done, Eamon. Thank nice you very much. Congratulations. Well, Sligo don't play too many championship games at Crow Park, do they? But my goodness, they certainly made today count. Tommy Lyons, I've seen a lot of games at this venue over the years. I have rarely see, seen a team play with such passion and throw everything into it to win in the end. Yeah, it, it, they were unbelievable, Sligo, today. They're absolutely, their heart and their commitment. It, Peter Ford will, 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 will have dreams about it because, you know, you bring a team up to Crow Park, you hope they're going to dive you on the pitch. And Sligo players died for Peter Ford today. They died for their own people. And you think of the Clifford brothers who, who sponsor Sligo. Mm. Their father was a county board chairman for, mm. for years. It's, it, you know, Sligo, this is the romantic story of the championship yeah. so far. No doubt. They were absolutely unbelievable. Mark Cosgrave, the fullback. Number three. He won a phenomenal amount of ball and died on it when it mattered. Some incredible scores during that match for Sligo. When they counted, we just picked out one to have a look at. Jerry McGowan, who scored two in the game, his second one was critical. Yes, uh, Sligo got the better scores and they were the better team in, in terms of the type of football that was played. In fairness, we'd have to say that Sligo were the better team and recovered in the second half and when they needed points in the second half after being three points down, their players were brave enough to go for them. Here we have Jerry McGowan giving the ball off still following up, surrounded by a sea of white shorts and goes for the long one and that was the, the trend of the game all through. Yeah. Sligo were very economical with the ball but in fairness to the bravery of their players and you think that they had been playing in Crow Park I every know. year yeah. and the other thing you think about it as well you'd have to give credit to the management, they used their substitutes very well but in that last 20 minutes Kildare 
three points in front, they should have coasted home and yet there was only one team who really had that passion to succeed. And we must say a word about Kildare because they did nothing wrong today, Tommy. They battled hard as well and it just didn't go for them. Yeah, it didn't go for them today and like Kildare, you know, in the end of the day when, when push came to shove, they couldn't manufacture the scores and scores have always been Kildare's problem for the last two or three years. They're a great team to keep running at you and running at you and come at you in droves and just they lost an awful lot of players before the game today mm. through injury mm. and really they were, they were dealing with only half a deck and it, it paid, they paid the price in the end of the day, Sligo just delivered it today when it mattered. Oh they surely did that, there's no doubt about it. Okay we need to draw breath here after watching all of that and refer back to earlier in the day. This is